Hey YouTube, it's Sarah here with Crimson and Wool and I have another tutorial right here for um, another Baby Yoda. I finally finished The Mandalorian and it took me much longer than I anticipated, but I had to create another one and this is the one I did here and I made it into a keychain. I'm probably gonna hang this one in my rear view mirror um, and so that's what I plan to do with mine, but I wanted to make a tutorial for you guys. And so here, he is right here. He's so cute and I love him and he's probably my favorite. I think I've made four different designs so far and this is what I wanted to accomplish. And so I know he's small, he's cute, but I love him and I love his facial features. So Yes, so why I am on here this way, instead of just showing you in a small introduction, I had a few things that I wanted to talk about with you guys. So um, the first thing is, pardon my voice, I'm recovering. So you can probably tell in my last video, when I started the mermaid doll um, series, my voice was pretty raspy. And so, sorry about that. Um, but I want to talk to you guys about a few things. The first thing is I have quite a bit of people asking me for written patterns and to be honest, I'm super intimidated by written patterns, but I am wanting to figure out how to do that. I don't know if I'm going to create a blog and put them there. I don't know if I want to do more detailed patterns and put them in an Etsy shop. Um, so I am figuring all of that out. So thank you for your patience as I do that. Um, also, I had a really sweet lady who created a pattern by taking um, like screenshots of my other Baby Yoda tutorial. And so um, I am still trying to figure out how to get that link to work when you click on it. So um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to get that to work. I know it's on the actual description box below, but it's not working. So I'm working on that as well. And then for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do um, very basic written patterns in the description box of my videos from now on. And so they're very basic. So I'm doing the step-by-step -step tutorials for you guys in the videos. But for those of you who are more advanced or who just want to have the written pattern and, and do it, then I will have just uh, um, just the pattern. It's not like step by step with pictures or anything. It's just literally the pattern right now. So there's that. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else I want to talk to you guys about. Um, I hope uh, I hope I don't forget anything. But I know some of you guys don't like really long introductions. But also, I just wanted to come on and say hi and. Um, just talk about a few things that I wanted to share. Also, I don't own Baby Yoda. I don't want to cause any copyright issues. And so um, the biggest thing is this is just fan art and I want to teach you guys how to make it yourself. And so um, that's what I'm doing with this, but I don't, I don't own rights to any characters or anything. So I'm trying to be really cautious about that and just share um, what I've created. Also, please leave a comment down below and let me know other tutorials that you would like to see. And so with that, if you would like to create this cute little keychain, I am gonna show you how to do that. So keep on watching. Thank you. So let's jump right in. The color that I'm starting with is the Caron One Pound and it is the color taupe. Um, and so we are going to start with six single crochets in a magic circle. And then we are going to be working into each stitch around. This is an increase round and it'll be two single crochets in each stitch. And that should give you a total of 12 single crochets. So starting round three, this is an increased round. We are working one single crochet into the first stitch, place your stitch marker, and then work two single crochets into the next. That is the increase. 
And so um, working that, we should have a total of 18 single crochets for round three. So I finished round three, and before I continue on to round four, I went ahead and tied a knot, making sure that that was closed tight. I tied it two times, and then I'm just gonna cut so that that is out of the way from working our rounds. So round four is one single crochet into each stitch, but we're gonna be working that into the back loop only. So I'm gonna remove my stitch marker so that you guys could see, and we are going to do one single crochet into this back loop. So we have our V, and normally we work into both loops, but with this round we're working into the back loop only. And what that does is it provides a little bit of, uh, I don't know, a ridge <laughs> um, at the base of the body. So it kind of has some separation and I feel like it allows the bottom to lay a little bit more flat as well. Okay, working in rounds five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We are going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So that should give you a total of 18 single crochets for each round, and that is a total of five rounds. Round 10 is going to be a decrease round, so, um, we have done our five rows of single crochet. Now we are going to decrease. We are going to do one single crochet into the first stitch, and then we're going to decrease, decrease <laughs> over the next two stitches. So we do our decrease in the front loop only. This helps um, keep the stitches tighter, and that is how you work it. So I will show one more time. One single crochet in the next stitch. So that is the pattern repeat. And that should leave us with a total of 12 stitches for round 10. All right. So before we finish off the last decrease, we have a color change. So we're gonna finish off the stitch with that color change. The color change is of course going to be green. And this is, um, I cannot remember offhand the name, but it's still the Karen one pound. Um, so it is the green for that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do the decrease as I normally do in the front loops only. I'm going to pull through two, and then I'm going to take the green and pull through the remaining two with that, and that will provide the stitch to finish off with all the color as needed, but then allows us to start our green. So I'm going to tie a very loose um, knot and when I mean loose, I'm not like letting it flop, but I'm just tying it so that it's not pulling. And then I'm going to cut off the tan and a little bit of the green. Try, try not to cut off your green that you're working, which I've done plenty of times. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the next round and it's gonna be all increases and then we will stuff. So we finished round 10, and now we are going to work round 11, which will be um, two single crochets into each stitch. So that is my first increase. I'm gonna remember to place my stitch marker, and then I'm simply going to work two single crochets into each stitch, and that should give us a total of 24 stitches for round 11. So before we continue, we are going to stuff our body a little bit. So I kind of bring out my working yarn just a tad, and then I'm going to take some stuffing 
or polyfill and then I am going to go around and make sure that it is distributed evenly. So the next round is gonna be a little different. And for those of you who are um, new to amigurumi, it isn't different stitches. It's just, it could get confusing because we have increases then regular then increases, but take it slow and I promise you will get it. So we are going to work one single crochet into the first six stitches. So that is just one single crochet in the next six stitches. Then in the next three stitches, it will be increases. So it's two single crochets in the next three stitches. Okay, then one single crochet into the next three stitches. So that's just one in each stitch. And then in the next three stitches, it's going to again be two single crochets into each stitch. So three stitches with two single crochets into each stitch. So what this is doing is I am creating an area for the cheeks although in the doll itself it isn't super noticeable but it just kind of creates a little bit more of a bulge in that area and so that's what we're doing here so I did two single crochets into the next three stitches and that should leave us with a remainder of nine stitches so if your stitches are off then um, the first thing to check is to make sure that you had the create the correct stitches to begin with. So you might have missed a stitch and only had 11. And then when you did your two double crochets in each stitch, then you would have only had 22 stitches. So just go ahead and make sure that you have the correct amount of stitches um, so that you could get this. So again, that was just a single crochet into the remaining nine stitches. All right, so that should give us a total of 30 stitches. So for round 13, we are going to simply do one single crochet into each stitch all the way around, and that should give us a total of 30 single crochets for round 13. So for round 14, we are basically going to do the opposite of what we did for round 12. So, and what I mean, so basically where we increased, we will be decreasing. So you will be doing one single crochet into the first six stitches. And then you will do a decrease. So technically you'll be over the next six stitches because you increased, so it made more. So work your decreases, decreases <laughs> into the front loop only. So I'm going into the front loop of that stitch and then wrapping it and going into the front loop of the following stitch. And then I did my decrease. So I'm gonna do that two more times. Okay, then you work one single crochet into the next three stitches. So the reason I redid that is because I felt like the gap was a little too big right there. Sometimes that happens. And if you do your decreases differently, please feel free to do them however you feel comfortable. And then again, a decrease into, uh, over the next six stitches.
and we should have a total of nine stitches remaining and we will work one single crochet into each of those. And now we should have a total of 24 stitches again. And so like I said, I did that so that we created a little bit of a cheek area right here. So for the next two rounds, which is 15 and 16, you will be working one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And that should give you a total of 24 single crochets for each round. I will meet you back when we have completed those two rounds. So I finished up rounds 15 and 16. And before we continue on to round 17, let's place our eyes. So what I like to do is I count up from where the neck begin, or the, yeah, like where we start the head. And I just count up four. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to place one eye. I'm gonna place it, then I'll show you because I think it'll be easier to see that way. So I'm lining it up with where the cheek is right there. And then we are going to skip three stitches. Better fingers right now. One, two, and three. And then we're going to place the other eye into the fourth stitch. Now these are a bit bigger, so it might be a little hard to get them into those stitches. Then go ahead and place the backings. So we have our eyes placed. Now we will stuff just a little bit into this neck area. So we went ahead and stuffed a little bit more, but um, if you could tell, I don't know if the shadow or the lining is different. I haven't stuffed a lot into the head yet. Just wanted to make sure that the neck was supported. Round 17 will be a decrease round and we are going to work one single crochet into the next two stitches and then a decrease. So that is the pattern repeat. And then you should have a total of 18 single crochets for round 17. Another decrease the rest of the rounds are. It will be one single crochet into the first stitch and a decrease over the next. And that should leave us with a total of 12 stitches for the round. So before we move on to move on to round 19, our last round for the body, let's stuff the head. I feel like that's good. I don't want to do too much. We still got to work the last decrease round, which is going to be um, one, uh, basically a single crochet decrease over the last 12 stitches, which will leave us with the remainder of six stitches. All right, so that should leave us with six stitches to close up. Make sure that you do a good 12 to 18 inches for the tail. This will allow us to do any detail for the eyes, well, the eyelids, the nose, and the mouth. So go ahead and pull off or your yarn out. 
and then finish stuffing the remaining area. And then let's close up. So we're gonna get your yarn needle or your darning needle. So we are going to basically decrease over the last six stitches this way. So I insert my hook through um, that one loop only, the front loop, and then I bring it around and insert my hook into the next. And now we are going to pull tight and that will close that hole up as if we were starting like into a magic circle. And then we are just going to pull through and there we go. Okay, <clears throat> so now let's go ahead and work on the facial features. So to do this, honestly, like sometimes the dolls don't look exactly the same and my husband says I'm crazy and he never notices but to me I notice because it is really difficult to make like an identical match and so sometimes like for instance I've been working on this one and like the nose is just a slight bit off and the position of the eyes and the eyelids um, are not exactly the same but that is okay that's what makes these different and unique um so yeah just know that every every each one has its own personal touch so i'm going to insert my hook up to this corner of one of the eyelids and bring my yarn through and then i'm going to jump over to this side so it's kind of like we're going straight across across but then I'm going to push my needle straight through and this one is just going to have the eye the eyes go in a tad bit like this so I pulled it and so it brought the eye down into the face a little bit and so we are going to make sure that we insert if I say hook I'm so sorry um but just know I mean needle at this point. Insert the needle um, in the same spot you came out of and then go ahead and repeat that same process on this side. So I'm coming over to the corner of the eye and then I am going to bring the yarn through directly over and just push it straight through to the back and then pull and then make sure that that yarn gets pushed up and pull tight. Now that one popped the yarn um, behind the eye, but it's okay. So this is just about placing the eyes a little bit more into the face. Okay, so now let's create the eyelids. So it's pretty much a very similar process. So I'm gonna come through the corner of the eye, sometimes that polyfilm stuffing comes out. <clears throat> so just go ahead and remove it. And then we're gonna bring the needle up into this area right here. Not directly over, but a little bit above that. And then wrap it around. And this is going to create that eyelid. And so you're gonna do that one to two more times depending on how you, how it looks and how you feel like the eyelid looks. So I usually do it about two times and it gives me enough of an eyelid right there. And then I'm going to move over, making sure I go in through the same side and just repeat the process onto this other side.
All right, so there we go. They aren't exactly the same, but like eyebrows, they shouldn't be sisters. They should be cousins. I don't know if that's even a saying, but <laughs> there you go. They shouldn't be exactly alike. And, it, and if you get them, that's awesome. If not, it's okay. Like it is all good. So we are going to continue on and insert again directly where we exited before to ensure that we don't um, pull any of the head back into itself back here. So what we want to do is insert the hook so that the nose is between the eyes, but not right between, a little bit lower. And to do this, we are basically going to wrap the yarn around one stitch right here. And we're gonna probably do that one to two times. Okay, so there we go. And then I'm going to bring it down here because we are going to do the mouth. So I'm gonna bring it over right, lined up one row below the eye. Don't pull too tight, but there you go. So there's the nose. And then we are basically just going to bring this across right here. So I'm gonna go over and under the other eye and just bring it through. And so we wanna have it tight, but just be aware the tighter you pull it, it will probably pull where you did the nose. So there we go. So there is the facial features. To finish off, I'm just going to work the remaining yarn just through the head a few times and then cut it off. And there we go. There's the face. So all we have left to do is the ears, the arms, and then the little um, like collar area. So let's go ahead and get started on those. So for the arms, you are going to make two the same way, and it's super simple. There's no color change. You're going to work six single crochets into a magic circle. So for row two, you are going to work one single crochet into each stitch. I'm just going to do the first stitch and then I want to place my stitch marker. And then I am going to tie off before I continue because it's easier to get a tighter knot this way because we don't want the arms to come undone. And I'm going to leave just a little bit of a tail because we don't stuff the arm. So rounds two through five are simply one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Okay, so I finished up to round five, and what we are going to do is we are going to pinch the arm shut, and then there's two stitches, and we're gonna work through both like both sides. So basically working one single crochet through both sides of the arm. And we're just gonna do that twice. And that's gonna close the arm off, and then we'll be able to have um, an area to sew it onto the body. So go ahead and work both your arms, which I've done. So the ears will be worked as same as the other ears I've done before. It will be um, working a chain six. Then work one single crochet into the second chain from the hook then work a half double crochet into the next, a double crochet into the following. So we are creating an area that comes up and now we're gonna come back down and work one half double crochet and then a single crochet into that last stitch. All right, 
Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the little point of the ear. So um, I believe this is called a peacock stitch, but it's kind of like my take on it. You will chain two. Then you are going to work a slip stitch over the area where the single crochet started. And then you will work one single crochet into that same stitch. And now working over the tail, we're gonna work along the other side. Work into the back loop only if you can. If you wanna work through both, please feel free to do so if that is more comfortable for you. So I'm going to do my half double crochet into the back loop only. Then my double crochet into the following. And then a half double crochet. And then into the last stitch, I'm going to work my single crochet. And then we are going to create an area so that we could sew this on to the head. So I'm going to work one single crochet and then a single crochet into the previous round. And then I kind of pull that tail tight. And at this point, I feel comfortable to just snip this off. And you could also work the tail back into the ear itself to ensure that it doesn't come loose. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not gonna do that right now. And then I'm going to work a slip stitch into the same stitch that I did the single crochet. And then I'm gonna leave enough of a tail to sew on and pull that through. Then go ahead and make one more ear. And so we are going to do a chain 21. And then we are going to work a half double crochet into the second chain from the hook and in each stitch across. And that should give you a total of 20 half double crochets. So there we have our round of 20 half double crochets. You are going to chain one and turn. Now we are going to do a slip stitch, or sorry, a single crochet all the way across. But, so when you create a half double crochet, there's this third loop right here. And this is what we work into like when we do the mermaid tail or um, other patterns. But it's gonna feel a little different because we're working on the opposite side since we chain one and turn. So we are going to work into this loop right here. So let me try to get close and then I'll try to slow down. So right here, we are going to work that single crochet. So when doing that, it's gonna create a braiding right there. And you're going to do that into each stitch all the way across. Now, if this is complicated and confusing, then just go ahead and work into the back loop only right here, if you want. And it will have just one little uh, ridge right there. Or you could just simply work into each stitch whatever you feel comfortable doing, but I challenge you to try to accomplish it if you can. Okay, so I did the collar. I have two arms and two ears, and now we are going to sew on. So I'm gonna start with the arms first and then arms are done the same way I'm going to place the arm center with the body and then just bring my needle through the back onto the body and around the other side so that I connect this side as well 
and then go ahead and insert my hook back into the arm next to that and pull through tight. And then I'm going to bring my needle back through into the middle of the arm right here. And then insert it back so that could bring that closed and tight and then again right here and I'm gonna bring that a little bit closer to the neck area there we go so the arm is secured and I work the remainder through a few times and then go ahead and repeat that process. Let's go ahead and do the ears. So go ahead and get your ear, make sure that the front is facing. Then we are gonna start at the base of um, the eye and we're gonna count over one, two, three, and four. Insert your hook under that stitch right there and bring your ear around and grab to do a whip stitch around. So work up into the next stitch. And same process, do a whip stitch connecting the ear to the head and then again right here into the stitch above it. So I wanna bring this part of the ear down a little bit more. I feel like that ear part is good. So I'm going to bring my needle back through right here and then grab a piece of the ear and connect it so that it brings it a little closer so let's see if that helped yeah there we go okay so we're going to repeat that process on the other ear So the last part to finish off is to sew on the collar. So I'm gonna just center it with the body and connect my needle. And then I'm going to flip over and then work the needle across and whip stitch this. So this, it, it doesn't exactly connect that's because I wanted it to be a tighter fit. So you will have to whip stitch tightly to bring it together. And if you feel like there's any stitches that are open, then just go ahead and go back a little further. But I found that it doesn't really cause that issue. Then I'm going to bring my needle up through and connect it a little bit more. So I'm going to adjust as needed so that it fits under the neck like so. Then I'm going to bring my needle through this portion right here and then just back down the next stitch to ensure that it goes through and just kind of create little stitches right here so that it is sewn to the actual body itself. And just kind of repeat that anywhere I feel 
it is necessary. Okay, I think that will be good. Sometimes it kind of pulls a little too tight, so I just kind of fix that. And weave in your ends. So that is it. It's pretty simple. I hope you think so too. So what I want to do right now is I want to show you how to add the keychain. Now I ordered these off of Amazon. Um, so what I do is I get some pliers and I connect this part to the center right here. Okay, so I have it through the center right there. And I'm going to take this part and connect it right there. And then I'm going to close this shut. So I close it and then I just kind of work with it however I need to, to make sure it's closed properly. And that is some trial and error. Sometimes it comes out perfect, other times it takes a little more time. And I feel like that's pretty good. Then I take this part and I connect it to the key ring. So I don't know what keychains you might have or what ones you order. I'll try to, to leave a link, but I'm finding that because it's like my Amazon account and it's not an affiliation link, it won't bring it up because I'm signed into my account. So I will figure out how to do that, but that is how you connect the keychain to it. All right, guys, so that is the end of the tutorial. I lost my light for the day. So pardon if the lighting is bad in here, but actually I'm thinking it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, this is the conclusion of the tutorial and I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't and hit that notification bell. That way you could be notified anytime I come out with a new video. Um, also, leave a comment down below. Let me know if there's any other tutorials that you would like to see. Also, just to say hi or if you have any questions for me.